place. And thank you, Dr. Burks, for uh, running such a great place. Um, I realize uh, chapel's mandatory for you, but I can tell you this is a tremendous honor for me. And so uh, I'll try to take advantage of your time. I, I realize we have just a few minutes to talk, but um, I almost didn't make it here. Uh, I was on a medical mission last week in Honduras, and we had a traffic jam that lasted two and a half hours. We thought we were going to miss our plane. I could just imagine having to call Dr. Burks and saying, I'm really sorry, but I'm still in Honduras. Uh, let me ask first, how many Bible majors do we have today? Okay, that's great. Um, I hope what I have to say means something to you, but I'm really talking more to the rest of you guys. The rest of you will be in the congregations where these others uh, will be preaching and speaking and, and others just like them. Um, your witness is stronger to the world. That's more than anything else what I hope you get out of the stories I want to share with you uh, today. Uh, those guys who raise their hands, they're paid to talk about God. And people in the world know they're paid to talk about God. And we've got to have them. And, and thank God for a place like this that can and educate them and, and a fellowship that can make them into great uh, ministers of the word. But uh, really, the rest of you, um, if you're going to be a teacher, you're supposed to show the world how Christ would act if he was a teacher. If you're going to be a, a salesman, you're supposed to the world show the world how Christ would act if he was a salesman or a lawyer or a, a business owner or whatever. You're, you're to bring the aroma of Christ wherever you go. Uh, I think that's especially important as our world grows more and more evil and as Christianity begins to be persecuted like it was in the early days of the church. Uh, you know, in Acts 4, the church was being persecuted and Peter was in prison and uh, the church met together to pray. What would you pray for? I can tell you what I would pray. I would say, Lord, defeat this enemy who's stopping us from spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. Stop them. Remove this obstacle so we can preach. And let me tell you, they did not pray that. Acts 4, go look it up. They said, Lord, give us boldness to speak up in, in, in the face of the opposition and persecution we face. God was so happy with that prayer that he shook the building. That's what I pray for you today. I pray for you to have boldness to speak up to someone. Uh, I can tell you I'm the weirdest author you'll ever hear speak. Uh, two reasons. One is I did not want to write a book. I finally realized I was like Jonah running from Nineveh. This was a project that God wanted me to do and I just didn't want to do that. I'm high energy. I had 32 employees, lots of things to do, secure in my position and future, and uh, God had another plan. And uh, I just kept saying no. Are you saying no to those gentle nudges from God? Don't do it. I discovered or, or realized uh, through my ordeal that uh, although I'm a nobody, God still uses nobodies like me. And if you'll speak up and be bold, God will use a nobody like you. We're all really just nobodies. I spent uh, seven years studying heaven and, and ended up with a, with a book on it. I, I'll be at the bookstore today till, till two. Uh, but I want to tell you two things that, that really changed my life as a result of that study. The first thing is I no longer fear death. I don't care when it happens. That's why the terrorists have all the power over us. They don't fear death. That's how we should be. We should be at the funerals. We should be celebrating the life because it just begun then. This is the Shadowlands, as C.S. Lewis says. We're going to the real world. The second thing was I was so excited about the, the discoveries I made about heaven in my seven years of research that I wish I could just give everybody a book. It was that exciting to me. With two kids in college, I really can't afford to do that. But uh, that, was, that was how I felt. I was in business 28 years as Dr. Uh, Burks mentioned, and, and I have, I was the owner and president. There's no reason to leave that. I, I worked when I wanted. I took off when I wanted. Why would you leave that? And I have sold out and walked away completely from that because of a couple of the stories I'm going to tell you today and, and one at the end. So I want to encourage you, even though you think your life is set, be open to the nudgings of God to go the direction he wants. He prepared you before time for certain works. Pray that you'll see him and be uh, uh, gently understand his spirit. He's not in the strong wind or the mighty fire or the hurricanes. He's in the still small voice, just like he was with Elijah. 
Jesus taught in parables, and I know I just have a few minutes to tell you uh, a couple of stories, but I want to share one or two with you to, to, to encourage you to be bold in speaking to others. Uh, as the owner of a, of a technology company, we, uh, one of the things we sold was copiers, Rico copiers. And um, one day, uh, the secretary buzzed my office. She said, uh, there's a mad customer on line two. His name is Steve. He's in a ministry in the Mount Pleasant area, just about an hour north of Longview, where I live, and uh, wants to talk to the owner. And so I picked it up, and I said, hello, Steve Hemphill. And the guy said, uh, yes, uh, this is Steve uh, with so-and-so ministry in Mount Pleasant, and uh, we, we uh, got a machine from you all three months ago, and your salesman said we could cancel that lease any time we wanted, and uh, uh, I'm calling to cancel the lease. want to see when you could pick it up. And I said, well, Steve, let me have your phone number. I'll look up the paperwork and call you right back. I did, I did that, and when I looked it up, I discovered that uh, it was actually six months ago. He was three payments behind to the leasing company, and he also owed us $350 in toner. And uh, the lease is non-cancelable, like borrowing money at the bank. So I called him back, and I said, Steve, this is Steve Hemphill. I'm, I, I want to first uh, apologize to you that somehow you got the uh, message that you could just cancel this lease anytime you like because we train our salespeople not to say that. It's, it's a binding contract, uh, you're, you're obligated. But now that I know that you're, uh, you have some problems or issues and you want out of this lease, I will do my best to find someone to take over the lease payments for you if you'll just give me a little time. And he said, well, Steve, I've already talked to my lawyer and it's an oral contract. And so uh, you'll be hearing from my lawyer. What are you gonna do for me today? And I said, well, Steve, the only thing I can tell you today is you need to catch up on your payments. If you're already three payments behind, it's gonna be hard for me to get somebody to take, to take that over. He said, fine, you'll be hearing from my lawyer. I said, well, okay, before we hang up, uh, you're a Christian, right? You're in the ministry outreach program there. He said, well, yes. And I said, well, I'm a Christian too. So uh, uh, do you mind if we just pray together on the phone before we hang up? He said, okay. I said, I'll tell you what, I've been in situations like this where uh, somebody prayed a real condescending prayer. I don't want to do that to you. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll start the prayer. And if I mess up in the first half of the prayer, you can correct that in the second half, okay? He said, okay. Obviously, it never happened to him before. Me either, to be honest with you. So I started the prayer. I said, Lord, I pray you would bless Steve and his ministry outreach program. And I pray that you would open his eyes to whatever it is you want him to see from this difficult situation that he must be in right now. Uh, because I know that if he doesn't learn the lesson you have planned from it, that he will have to repeat that ground. So I pray you'd, you'd have that happen quickly and you'd bless him greatly in his ministry for you, whatever it is he does for you. And if you want, Lord, me to do anything different than what I've already told Steve, I want you to put it on my heart to do so in Jesus' name. And there was about 60 seconds of silence. And Steve finally spoke up and said, Dear Lord, everything Steve said, in Jesus' name, amen. I'm here to tell you, prayer still works. I, I never heard from him again. I never heard from his lawyer, and he even paid $350 in toner that he owed, owed us for toner and service. Uh, another day, uh, I got one of my employees walked in, Jerry, from the back, and he was terrified, and he was shaking. He said, Steve, can I come into your office and talk to him? And I said, yeah, Jerry, come on in and sit down. He came in, but he shut the door and sat down. That never happens. And... Uh, he just kind of looked at the floor and was wringing his hands, and I said, Jerry, what's the matter? He said, I have to tell you something. I'm a homosexual. I said, Jerry, let me tell you something. God loves people who think they're homosexual. But since he won't let homosexuals into heaven, and I want you to go to heaven with me, I want you to know. I'm just warning you now. I'm going to pray that someday you will get away from that lifestyle and start witnessing to other people who think they're homosexual. And he just started bawling like a baby. He said, you're not going to fire me? And I said, no, Jerry, first of all, that's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> but secondly, and more importantly, that's unloving. I don't believe Jesus would fire you. I believe he'd love you and, and love you enough to tell you the truth that you can't go to heaven if you practice that lifestyle. You know, I can't, I can't have 20 women either. It's, it's, we have to obey God's laws if we want to live with him in eternity. He did leave that lifestyle. 
and, and uh, started witnessing to others and helped them to leave it. You never know what God's going to do, but he's, they're looking to see how we respond.